So I'm Gil Pitney, I'm from Texas Instruments, and I'm also an assignee into the into Lenaro and the Light team, the Lenaro, <coughs> Lenaro uh, Internet of Things and Embedded team. Uh, we're work, working on uh, getting ARM platforms uh, well supported into the Zephyr project. Uh, being from TI, of course, uh, getting the TI uh, platforms uh, into Zephyr. Specifically, I've been working on one of our uh, SOCs that's a, it's a CC3220 SF, which deals with, uh, which offloads Wi Fi onto a coprocessor from the MCU, um, the MCU running Zephyr, coprocessor running a, running a, a different uh, operating system. So, uh, so the motivation for this, uh, this work is we, as I said, we have the, uh, the Simple Link uh, family of MCUs that uh, has, a, has a SOC, uh, which uh, also has an SDK, uh, and it completely offloads the Wi-Fi stack onto an integrated uh, network processor, and NWP is the network coprocessor. Um, so the reason for doing this uh, makes it easier to integrate Wi-Fi into your solution. Um, it, it offloads the, the, the memory, the, the power management, everything onto, the, onto this coprocessor. Uh, all the security and secure communications is also offloaded, and it's in a separate processor, so it's in some address space, so it can't be accessed. Uh, fiddled with from the MCU, uh, running possibly not secure stuff. <coughs> um, and uh, <coughs> the current SimpleLink SDK supports the TI RTOS, TI's own um, <coughs> real-time operating system, and free RTOS, but is designed, the software architecture is designed to be portable to other OSs, uh, which allowed me to port this to Zephyr. Um, and um, so the Zephyr networking stack I uh, uh, assume that people have already uh, a little familiar with Zephyr here. Uh, I'll mainly be talking about the networking stack. Uh, it already has support for Wi-Fi via an offload tap for the data and some uh, Wi-Fi control plane APIs. Um, and recently Zephyr has added support for TLS security into the BSD socket APIs, um, which meshes well with the TI Simple Link design. We kind of do the same kind of thing. Um, and the goal here is to efficiently integrate the Simple Link offload capabilities into Zephyr, but also while leveraging Zephyr's uh, upcoming socket-based networking protocol. So, um, yeah, all this work was done on the CC3220SF Launch XL development board, which is a development board from TI. Um, and uh, um, the, the uh, um, Where is it? Here we go. Okay, so so what I'm going to be doing uh, is, in the rest of the talk, is talking about the uh, hardware architecture and software architecture of SimpleLink of the chip. Uh, I'll talk a bit about Zephyr and the networking stack uh, as it pertains to this integration. Uh, now keeping in mind that the networking stack in Zephyr has undergone quite a bit of evolution uh, in the past year or so since I've been working on this. Um, so I'll show you sort of a before and after picture of the networking stack uh, as it's evolved to the point where it's allowed this offload to work very efficiently. Um, so uh, the, the hardware architecture basically is a, this is a very high level, but um, so this is this is the uh, this this is the SOC. Um, as I said, it's an MCU. It's a uh, 80 megahertz uh, Cortex M4 uh, with 256k of RAM. SRAM, uh, megabyte, of, megabyte of flash, there's, uh, there's a secure flash also, four megabytes, that holds uh, secrets, uh, assets that are to be protected. Um, there's a network coprocessor as part of the SOC. Uh, the communication between the MCU and the network coprocessor is through a dedicated SPI uh, connection. And the network processor is uh, what talks to the internet. So this is this is uh, did I do something? <laughs> this is a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi chip. So um, it has all the all the Wi-Fi uh, lower layer stuff, uh, physical radio, uh, baseband, um, supplicant, uh, all that on the network processor in a separate address space from the MCU. It also includes the complete TCP/IP stack is on the network processor. Um, 
Also, security is handled on the coprocessor. So SSL, uh, Handshake, um, Ciphers, uh, Crypto, uh, through hardware accelerators. Often, hardware accelerators are there to accelerate the crypto. crypto. And there's even an HTTPS uh, secure server, web server, that, uh, that lives on the, uh, on the coprocessor. So there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that's offloaded onto the coprocessor, including uh, there's power management policies you can set for the coprocessor so that it, it handles power management so it can go to sleep when nothing's happening. Uh, it can keep sessions open and go to sleep and wake up when a packet comes in. So that's all handled transparently on this, on this coprocessor. Um, there are a lot of security features of this, uh, this chip that, uh, that ensure that people can't, say, uh, fiddle with the, uh, um, fiddle with the, uh, the, the, uh, the application that you've delivered. Um, so there's a secure boot that uh, uh, if this uh, flash were to change, it checks the hash against what's been programmed as the factory image on the production line, and if it's, if it's different, then it, uh, it will load from, from here. Uh, so, so someone can't uh, insert some new, new code uh, unbeknownst to the, uh, to the device. There's device keys that uh, are used for verification and encryption of um, service packs that have the firmware, that have the firmware that update the network processor. Um, all the certificates using the TLS handshake are the keys private keys are stored on secure flash in the file system, uh, which is accessible by the network processor. Um, of course, Wi-Fi itself has security. It supports WPA, personal security, and uh, enterprise security. Um, and there's a lot more security features that, uh, there's pages and pages of security features in the TRM, which uh, exercise for the reader. Um, so uh, software architecture, so uh, the SimpleLink, uh, as I said, it's a family, oh, it's a family of uh, processors. It, this, I'm talking about Wi-Fi, but there's also Bluetooth Low Energy, sub gigahertz. Um, there's, um, so this is just the Wi-Fi. <clears throat> I'm talking about an S the SOC, the 3220. There's also just, you can just buy the network code processor and hook it up to another uh, an, an MCU of your choice, ARM MCU of your choice. Um, it doesn't have to be ARM. Um, and this SDK comes with uh, all the APIs that allow easy access to the, to the code on the network uh, coprocessor uh, for doing basically control and data plane uh, stuff. Um, so a couple of key points. Um, so there's a, a little, a thin OS abstraction layer that allows the host driver uh, it's called the host driver, which is basically the device driver that, that uh, interfaces with the coprocessor to be ported to another OS. And I said, as I said before, it's currently supporting TI's uh, stable uh, production-worthy uh, RTOS and also free RTOS. And, um, and so I was able to basically use this layer to port this uh, to uh, Zephyr without too much, too much effort. Um, so the other the other thing that's worth noting is uh, uh, in, in order so in order to uh, allow this to be used in other applications naturally for the for the data communications, uh, TI chose to export uh, socket API, use a standard socket API so POSIX APIs. Uh, so for the sockets, um, uh, that's that's the way to to get communications and. To handle secure communications, they've uh, uh, put the TLS uh, as part of the uh, socket API. So normally, in a lot of uh, a lot of applications, TLS is a is a wrapper, is is on top of the socket APIs. Uh, in this in this uh, design, TLS is is sort of embedded in the socket APIs, and I'll talk more about that later and show you an example of how that's working. Um, okay. So, so that's the that's the simple link uh, SOC architecture in a you know high level, um, and so we need to we want to integrate this into Zephyr. So this is this is sort of a high level picture of the networking stack. 
Um, so, uh, oh, okay, gotta use this new clicker. Um, so basically, uh, let's start from the from the top. So uh, there are Zephyr networking protocols like uh, WebSock, MQTT, uh, LWM2M, uh, DNS, HTTP, SMTP, typical uh, networking protocols that are built on top of um, the API that Zephyr supports uh, for uh, for communication. So that's uh, when, when um, this is sort of a previous state, but or a current state, uh, minus some new, new additions. Uh, there is an API called NetContext, which is sort of like a socket API, but it has it's callback based. It's not synchronous, um, so uh, which works works well with a lot of these asynchronous protocols. Callbacks go back into the uh, into the networking protocols, passing network buffers, network network packets that need to be parsed. They're, there are a linked list of fragments of, of buffers that you need to parse through. Um, and uh, on, on top of that, there, there is a, uh, an API called NetApp, which is sort of a convenience API, which helps with some of the client server setups, uh, say a static uh, IP uh, setting, uh, and also mainly uh, handling the TLS support. Uh, so Zephyr uh, is using embed TLS as the TLS library. There are many other libraries. There's Polar, SSL, OpenSSL, uh, WolfSSL. But this is the one that's, uh, that's used by Zephyr. Um, and that provides the, the, uh, all the hard work of doing the TLS handshake for setting up secure, secure communication channels. Uh, and that's based on a net context, which is, like I said, a a socket-like API, but it's a non-standard API. And so uh, some of the discussion over time has been, well, you know, we'd, we'd like to be able to support protocols, third-party protocols coming in that are based on sockets. Um, a lot of vendors like TI create their, create their, uh, create their, the value by uh, giving something that can be easily integrated into other systems. And what, what, what's better than uh, having something that's you know a standard API or something that's closer to a standard API, so this this was a bit of a a bit of a rub, uh, uh, and then over time uh, it was determined stakeholder input you know so well we want more POSIX APIs and, and so the BSD socket API was added uh, to Zephyr under the name ZSOC, um, and over that there were some samples and. MicroPython, uh, MicroPython so uh, mod socket was written so they can, can use that. Um, so this is, uh, this is sort of uh, how things are, are moving toward, more towards sockets uh, and away from, from net context. There's also a, in the networking stack a management subsystem which handles callbacks from lower layers uh, for, from drivers that say connect to uh, 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 Get an, say an IP address established through DHCP uh, callback will come that yeah we have an IPv4 address and that can be sent back up to NetApp or other applications as a notification. Um, so the the actual IP stack, the TCP IP stack, is built on a network interface, uh, and then there's various technologies under the L2 interface for Ethernet, uh, 802, 15.4, Bluetooth. Uh, but the point is, uh, there is no real technology for Wi-Fi built into Zephyr. The idea was that uh, the plan has been to support Wi-Fi via offload chips and via a tap from this net context uh, level uh, through a configuration option that would basically vector uh, communication through net context to your TCP IP offload engine, which could be running on a coprocessor, typically on a coprocessor. Um, and so that's the plan. So there, there are no Wi-Fi L2 drivers currently. There's no Wi-Fi supplicant in Zephyr uh, or provisioning support yet. Um, and the plan is, as I said, to, to support things through offload, uh, an offload tab. And again, secure communications are provided through this embed TLS, TLS library. Okay. So 
Um, so when, when we look at this, uh, this was the, the state, um, and looking at how we would integrate uh, our network coprocessor into this, uh, there's various options we can take. One is uh, we could just, um, well, like I said, SimpleLink has an SDK, has a whole set of APIs. You could just, in, in Zephyr, write an application that, um, as I said, it's, uh, the SDK was ported to Zephyr. Uh, in fact, the SDK is part of the Zephyr tree. It's imported as one of the ext slash hell uh, TI uh, uh, external libraries. You could just include the SimpleLink SDK headers, SimpleLink.h and SysSocket.h, and then use all of the uh, control and data APIs that SimpleLink provides and still use Zephyr for uh, sensors and other device drivers that are not networking related. So the advantage there is you get you know, full access of the SimpleLink uh, uh, capabilities, uh, full hardware entitlement. You can still use Zephyr drivers, as I said. But the, the cons are it doesn't really integrate very well with Zephyr with event management. Um, and it doesn't really leverage the Zephyr, Zephyr's uh, socket-based protocols now that, that will be coming up. Um, yeah, you can go into the Zephyr protocol code and, and switch uh, if def uh, TI stuff, use uh, ours, but you really don't want to do that. It would be nice to, out of the box, be able to use the Zephyr protocols with our stuff through some kind of an offload tab. The other option is uh, to go down to uh, this level here and write an L2 uh, driver, a low-level driver, uh, using send receive uh, calls. Uh, SimpleLink has a raw socket mode called a transceiver mode at a very low level. You could write something like that. That would hook deeply into the uh, Zephyr core, uh, so it enables some features that, uh, that Zephyr would like to have, like uh, routing packets between network interfaces. But this doesn't really leverage what TI is providing, so you're not really getting the hardware ent entitlement of this network processor because it's, it's not offloading the, all the network buffer queuing and management that the network processor is doing, it's duplicating it. The DHCP, the DNS, is not getting offloaded, it's going to be done in Zephyr. Um, and the security is being done by Embed TLS, not by us, or not by the network processor. So, you know, why buy, why buy the chip in that case? Um, the other option is uh, offload to that net context level, and that's pretty good. That does offload the TCP IP stack. <clears throat> that's at, at, at this level, but it doesn't offload the security. So this, is, this would be using embed TLS, but the security that we handle is not, is, is not being used. Th there's some other issues in using that, and that is that um, there's some overhead mapping between the Zephyr socket APIs to the network con the asynchronous callback based network context of APIs and back to the synchronous socket APIs. Uh, data that's received from the network processor has to be copied into another network buffer structure and queued. Um, and there's typically a driver thread that needs to select sockets that are available and trigger callbacks into the, into the net context uh, asynchronous uh, callback based stack. So there's, there's some overhead in using in this solution. And, and as I said, the main thing is the TLS handshake and all the crypto is not offloaded in this case. Um, so it seems natural to, uh, well, just, uh, offload at this, uh, at the socket layer. That's another option, which has recently been added into, into Zephyr. And the way that's enabled is you uh, define a, a net socket offload uh, configuration option, and then all the calls through sockets get offloaded to the socket APIs provided by uh, the SimpleLink driver. So here we have a, a Wi-Fi driver that, uh, that basically provides socket operations into Zephyr. And this is kind of uh, inspired by the same solution that's in Minute, another uh, IoT OS. Um, uh, and it's, um, it, it's actually very simple to implement. And so the pros here is it avoids all the overheads of the previous option, uh, option three. Um, secure 
communications are fully offloaded. DNS is offloaded too via get ad address info hook. Uh, the only cons currently is that there's only one socket provider allowed in the system and, there, and no packet routing across net interfaces. Well, for our use case, it doesn't matter so much. We typically have uh, devices that are connected to an AP and they, and they, they send up uh, data periodically uh, to one to one access point, and there's really no packet routing across network interfaces. So, this is how. So this is the option we choose for Simple Link, and this is how it looks now. So we have uh, um, TLS. So some other changes that have happened since that previous uh, networking stack slide is in Zephyr TLS is also being handled at the socket layer. There's some uh, recent APIs that have allowed this to happen through some set sock opt APIs and a new protocol family that's sent into the socket call. Um, there is uh, this new offload tap that allows offloading at the socket layer, as well as this, uh, this layer here, for those that are uh, not having to worry about uh, or find to have security done on the MCU. Um, uh, so uh, these, these are Wi-Fi drivers, these are actual uh, device drivers, and uh, each, each one of them has a control interface uh, currently for Wi-Fi. So a new Wi-Fi management uh, uh, module has been developed that allows scan, disconnect, and callbacks into the Wi-Fi management system when uh, connection occurs, disconnection occurs, or scan results come back from these drivers. Um, and there's an initialization of the interface, the network interface, which sets up uh, the coprocessor defaults, uh, wireless LAN defaults, like the, the station mode, station or access point mode, um, network parameters, like lease times, stuff like that. That's, right now, that's all set up just by defaulting values in the in the Wi-Fi drivers. There's no extra control plane APIs right now to set that up in Zephyr. That's probably something that will be needed in the future. And the other big thing that's changing is these protocols which were previously written to the NetApp and NetContext API are, are, are being rewritten to, uh, to the Socket API. So that's just happening. There's, there are a couple of PRs uh, for uh, MQTT and uh, Lightweight M2M that are uh, in play and uh, going through the birthing pains of, uh, of getting it working on sockets and linear buffers and moving away from net, net packet and things like that. Um, so that's sort of where, where it's going. So, so I mentioned that um, TLS was being added to the uh, socket APIs. So why is this being done? So uh, well, there was a lot of debate on this. Uh, the, the motivation is that uh, TLS is hard to get right. Uh, there's, uh, depending on what, API, uh, what TLS library you use, there are many APIs, configuration options. The idea is to try to make it easy uh, to add TLS to non-secure socket-based uh, networking applications and protocols. Um, someone who's not familiar, I'm, I'm not that familiar with you know, security as well, so, but if you're not that familiar with it and you see all these configuration options, you gotta do a lot of reading, you might choose some wrong settings that actually make your application insecure. Um, so, for example, adding TLS to a networking app with embed TLS involves uh, you know, these various steps. Um, creation of uh, context, registration of the, your, your entropy generator, uh, setting up certificates, uh, configuring the, the SSL layer for when it does the, the handshake, uh, you create the socket, and then call embed TLS APIs for connect, uh, which does the handshake and reading and writing, and then tear down of context. Now, admittedly, that's not that bad. Um, it's probably better than some other uh, APIs, but we could we could do better. And Zephyr wrapped all this with NetApp, but we'd like to also standard, uh, leverage standard APIs. 
uh, like the BSD socket APIs, because people are familiar with that. They're not familiar with NetApp, they're not familiar with NetContext. So, so more details on what's involved in establishing a secure channel. Um, this is the TLS handshake. So you first need to have some your certificates and keys stored, provisioned somewhere in your secure flash, ideally secure. You don't want this really sitting in RAM, uh, especially your private keys. Um, in the case of TI, uh, TI has a, uh, a catalog of trusted root CA certificates. So if a, if a root certificate comes in that's not known, it'll give you a warning uh, in error, um, which you can ignore, I suppose. But um, it checks the time and date stamp and gives you, a, gives you an error. Um, the uh, handshake starts with a sort of hello messages that, that uh, uh, the client sends to the server, the, the TLS version it's dealing with, uh, the cipher suites it can su support. The server selects a cipher suite. And then, um, and then the server sends a certificate, it gets verified by the client. Uh, and then there's an optional, uh, optional uh, 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 certification or verification of the, of the client by the server. And, uh, and then at, the, at some point they determine a, a secret session key that they use to encrypt the communication from then on. And uh, so quite a bit's involved, the state machine's involved in, in setting up a secure, secure communication. So I mentioned that the certificates and keys should be provisioned to the device. Pro by provisioning, I mean basically burnt to a flash. Um, and the secret should be kept secure from the non-secure uh, uh, apps. So on the, so for example, on the on the TI CC3220 SF for secure flash, uh, the network coprocessor runs the TCPI stack and crypto, as I said, on a separate CPU address from the MCU. Um, and the network coprocessor has full access to the keys. The MCU can write new secrets uh, via over-the-air updates, but the secrets are signed encrypted uh, with a device key, a uh, secret device key, and uh, there's rewrite access control levels. Uh, another way you could, you could keep, these, keep the separation would be like on an ARM uh, V8M device that has trusted, uh, trusted execution environment. Um, where secrets can be stored in a secure memory partition. And uh, there's, there's a talk later uh, Tuesday by Andy, Andy Gross on, on might touch upon some of that. Uh, so there's kind of two methods. One is you, you write a separate provisioning app to store the certs and keys into a secure flash file system or use a vendor production line tool to provision uh, the keys to secure flash. And that's sort of what, that's the method that uh, I'm using here. Uh, in this solution. So an example of uh, method one, uh, so Zephyr's added a TLS credential add API. Um, so you could have code that looks something like this. Uh, if you, you have a config uh, variable, which you can enable uh, a new TLS credentials API, which allows you to store a root CA certificate um, into memory. Uh, right now in Zephyr, this is this is this is adding this into into RAM. Uh, this is not a big deal in this example because this is a public a public certificate. But if you had private keys, you would ideally want that to be in in a secure secure partition or secure flash. But this is how you get an association of the content of in, in, with method one content of the actual certificate with a tag. So this associates a tag with the, with the uh, root certificate. Um, another method would be, like in the case of TI, we have a Uniflash tool, it's a production line tool, which allows you to uh, access a secure flash and add, uh, add new uh, trusted root catalogs, uh, add new certificates and keys. For example, in the example I'm gonna show next, uh, We'll have an HTTP, HTTP GET uh, example that uh, uses a global sign R2 certificate to, uh, to uh, access the Google web, web page over HTTPS. Um, so you could just take this uh, DER file 
and, uh, and write it into Secure Flash. Uh, then at runtime, bind the certificate file name through the tag, uh, through a set sock opt, and then you'll be able to use it to set up secure, secure communication. And the way that looks like is uh, like this at a initialization time. Uh, you can, uh, okay, we define our tag. Um, and if we're doing secure offload, uh, we can set in uh, this array called CA certificate. In the previous example, it was the actual uh, byte array of the, of the certificate. In this case, it's just the name, the file name of the certificate as it was stored on secure flash in the secure file system. Uh, else we use method one. And then we, do the, we can do the TLS credential add as before, where we add uh, to the tag, we associate the tag with uh, the certificate. In this case, the certificate is just the file name. And then at runtime, uh, this, is, this is the HTTP, HTTP get example modified for secure offloading. Um, this is just the preamble which sets up the, uh, the port for 443 for HTTPS um, and then starts to uh, uh, set up some stuff. Sorry for the denning. Uh, does a get adder info to get the, the address into the res structure to do the uh, socket connect. And then if uh, we're dealing with credentials, uh, doing TLS in the socket APIs. Uh, we do this bit of code, otherwise it's this bit of code. Uh, and then the rest of the networking application looks the same. So what's happening here, if we're using TLS in sockets, when we create the socket, we have a new protocol family, uh, iProto TLS, and the version of TLS we're using. And then we make our list of tags and set that to the socket via a set sock opt call with the socket option TLS uh, and then the flag and then the, the list of tags. And then after that, when we do a connect, this will automatically call the TLS uh, handshake, uh, whether it's using embed TLS uh, or, um, or the TI network processor, in which case it gets offloaded. And then when we do send and receive at that point, uh, it's all over a secure channel. So the point of this is, uh, so with a few lines of code, we've added TLS security to our socket-based application. And if Simple Link is the platform here, under the covers, all the secure offload, all, all the secure communications is going to be offloaded to the network processor. So just with a few changes to some initialization code in the, in the networking protocol. So, um, so in summary, um, as I said, the, uh, the SOC that we have allows the whole TCP IP stack, Wi-Fi, secure communications to be offloaded to the network processor. It's achieved by writing a host driver, porting that, uh, taking the host driver from the SimpleLink SDK, porting that to Zephyr via its OCell, um, writing a Zephyr Wi-Fi driver that implements just the control plane API for, send, uh, for scan, connect, disconnect, and the callbacks into the networking stack. And, and then for the sockets, uh, providing the socket APIs through a, through a function table that goes up to the, uh, that's, that's registered with the socket, uh, socket shim layer. Uh, certificates are provisioned uh, using the TI Uniflash tool. Uh, and with the help of this new TLS API, then we can get uh, full secure socket offload and that will be available to the upcoming uh, socket-based network protocols. And that's it. So there's a lot of time, I think we have, yeah, questions. Mm -hmm. uh, 
conceivably, uh, since you already have on your network processor a, a, a microcontroller, um, and I assume there's some there's a serial link between the two uh, processors. Right. Yeah. Um, would it make sense if you beefed up your network processor to just run Zephyr directly? Uh, we don't have. Uh, what would be the advantage of that? No, we don't. We Single don't have chip any plans. bill of materials. For there's a lot of uh, I don't know what the IP is on on that side, but uh, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, work that went into it. Um, the 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 OS that's currently running that stack is uh, is um, something that we've had for many years. Uh, it's it's gone into automotive. Uh, uh, processes, uh, automotive customers. It's very robust and uh, high quality, and uh, um, and uh, Zephyr still needs to get there. So um, we're interested in, in using Zephyr here because we want to expand our ecosystem. Um, Zephyr on the MCU uh, because we want to expand our ecosystem. On the other hand, we have this network processor with certain capabilities, and uh, um, we haven't really entertained that thought. Well, it seems like ostensibly you've got this, it's a network processor, it's also Wi-Fi, and you've got the functionality, so it's got an upper map and a lower map, and a hardware lower map. There's a lot of stuff going on in there, so, you know, from an offload perspective, they've had this chip for a long time, and they're trying to enable this effort. Yeah, the other thing is uh, when you get to the network processor, um, Zephyr may not have all the kind of device drivers to support the Mac and other things like that. Possibly, in the, in the Bluetooth case, possibly. <coughs> oh, yes. You know, on, the, um, on the part where the certificate and stuff, it, it seemed like you were describing, <coughs> excuse me, it seems like you were describing two different ways of getting the certificates in there, one with this tool, mm -hmm. which is your, your TI tool, which puts it actually into the I guess you got a secure subsystem flash inside of that chip. The certificate, but the other way, and signed. the other way yeah. with the Zephyr way, yeah. where's it putting it? I mean, it's, is it? So, so currently, currently it's just it's going in RAM. Okay, that's not good then, right? So, so yeah, it's fine for this example with just the public key, but when you have if you're doing client authentication with a with a private yeah. key, uh, that needs to go into some secure area. So, so as I mentioned, it's. Uh, um, it, when we had, you know, ARM V8M, maybe there'll, there'll be a secure partition and that can be handled. Well, I'm wondering if the experience that you, you've gone through on this platform, if we couldn't abstract Zephyr in such a way that allows you to even go through the Zephyr way of setting this, but it goes through to your secure, it takes advantage of your secure subsystem. That, that, needs, to be, that needs to be added. That's something that's not there right now. Right now I'm just using the method two. The method one can be implemented because we do have... Uh, there is the possibility to do file uh, system API, uh, file system calls, if you have the signature and everything right, to update, because we have to do that with OTA anyway, uh, if you want to update cert uh, certificates in the field. So yeah, that's something that's not hooked in right here. So I, my, my expectation is that we're gonna have to expand this API a bit. Thank you. Yes. Um, speaking of over the air and updates, um, it, it's nice when you can offload, for example, TLS to a coprocessor because then you don't have to implement it in your application. 
Um, but on the other hand, what is if there's a security problem in the implementation of the TLS, like it was Heartbleed some years ago, or if I want to have a newer version of TLS because I want to throw away maybe the IoT device after two, three years, uh, yeah. can this be updated, this network coprocessor? Yeah, yeah. so that's a, that's a common uh, concern, uh, especially in the Linux, Linux community, um, for having this kind of offload uh, in, in a main, mainline operating system like Linux. It's the same concern here, as you mentioned. So yeah, the, uh, the, uh, there's a service pack, which is signed by TI, which can be uh, updated for the device that has new firmware for the network coprocessor. So if there's a, a new hack that's uh, been identified, then TI can provide that. And uh, through over-the-air updates, you can update the new image. Uh, it'll be signed also, so that you can, uh, you can update for any security holes that security bug fixes that might occur over time, but it would, it would come from TI. Yeah. Okay, so anything else? All right, well, thank you very much.